John and Tail. Bye. I didn't know you'd moved to Christchurch until I read your submission. Indeed. Welcome. When did you arrive? January. Hmm? February? January. January. Right. Well, welcome. Welcome to Christchurch. Thank you. Yota Koto. Um, my name is Bronwyn Summers, and I have returned home after 15 years away and was astonished to find that policy that has absolutely failed at a national level is being touted here in Christchurch, namely the sell-off of assets, which of course at a state level was started 30 years ago and billions of dollars have gone offshore of things that you and I owned before. This is myopic short-sightedness and I think it shows a complete lack of political foresight. You are selling off what rightly belongs to us all and more importantly, future generations. What will be next for Christchurch? Housing, water and anything else that none of you were mandated to sell. One of the Australian states is currently floundering around trying to find something they haven't already flogged off to sell because they have a crisis. No one here campaigned on a platform of selling assets. Mm -hmm. There are always alternatives and I suggest that those of you who think they should be sold should resign and let democracy take its place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think talking about alternatives, um, there are always lots of alternatives. And we have, in terms of the proposal that the council's put before the people of Christchurch, give us the authority to sell 100% of all of the assets. That's essentially what the council's saying. And we have seen this all before. We saw it in the 1980s, in particular, 1984, um, with the Labor government. Then we saw it with the national government. Our national assets were, we were asset stripped. And they were assets which, which the people owned, but they were stripped away by the government. And of course, we're always told, you know, nobody would be worse off. This is a wonderful policy. There'll be trickled down. Everybody will benefit. We were told that in 1984. And here we are in 2015 with a quarter of our children growing up in families living in poverty. That's just, well, it unac was un unacceptable to my generation and it should be to everybody around this council table. The, uh, we put four, um, we've just uh, listed four things there. If you've got our submission, I don't know if you've got it in front of you. But there are four things that we see. And it, it, it's based around renegotiation. And I want to make this point really clear. Renegotiation. The corporate sector do this all the time. They do it every day of the week. They go to the government and say, we don't like this, we want to renegotiate. Look at Sky City, what they did. Um, they got the government to agree to reduce the size of the convention centre they, they were proposing to keep it within, within the original budget, well, the Sky City's budget. And we've seen um, Rio Tinto, you know, every time... Every time they, uh, every couple of years, they go to the government and say, oh, they threaten to close the aluminium smelter. And I have to say, it'd be wonderful if they did close it because uh, it's actually of, um, it's been a huge drain on this community for a long time, the community of New Zealand. They've, you know, they've been, they're the biggest um, recipients of, of, uh, of, of social welfare of anyone in the country. So what I'm saying is that this renegotiation is just part and parcel of what happens. And the Christchurch City Council needs to go to the government and renegotiate these things, the capital projects um, and the, the cost of the building horizontal infrastructure and the convention centre money. And, you know, I've, I've heard in the last 10 minutes, well, the convention centre money, the government's paying for that, so, so we're not considering it. That's the wrong way of looking at it. This is $160 million the government has earmarked for Christchurch. If you ask the people of Christchurch, they'd say, we don't want that money spent on a convention centre. We want our roads fixed up. We want our, when our footpaths fixed up. I think the council needs to act on behalf of the people of Christchurch rather than on behalf of a national party agenda. And let's... I mean, we all know that the, over the last few years, the government has been squeezing and squeezing and angling to, to put the city council, Christchurch City Council, in a position where it is forced to sell assets. And I think that the, the, the council, the mayor and the council, need to go 
to the people of Christchurch and say, and bring the people of Christchurch on side. Because the government will back off if there's a strong response from the council, which would be backed up by the citizens of Christchurch. All of this needs renegotiation. We do not want to see, the people of Christchurch repeatedly have said, we don't want to sell our assets. Even the former mayor, who was a much more conservative individual, apparently, he said he'd never, they would never sell city assets. And yet we're, it's being considered here. So I think the, um, you know, I think we're, we're, it seems to me the whole discussion has got around, we're looking at individual trees and, and, and we're forgetting that there's a forest there. And the forest is actually the, the, the welfare of the whole community of Christchurch. So our, our, I guess, uh, Bronwyn and I, we've been mulling this over, and we, would, we want to see the City Council show real leadership in this, bring the people of Christchurch on side, and say to the government, no, we don't want a national party agenda for Christchurch. We want, a, we want a, an agenda for the citizens of Christchurch. Thank you. Can I put a different um, scenario to you? One that kind of goes, um, previous council... Uh, here is a um, here is a, a, a mechanism whereby you can basically hide the financial reality of what has been signed up to, i.e., an unaudited three-year plan. People make commitments and run on those commitments mm -hmm. as part of an election campaign, and they get here and find out that actually it was all smoke and mirrors, and that there are some huge holes in our budget, mm. and then we're told that we have to find um, a resolution to that problem um, without necessarily having access to all of the tools that one would hope to have if you were in the non-audited environment. So let me just put this to you. If, say for example, all of the cost-sharing agreement was put to one side, and all of the anchor projects were off the table. And if we didn't have enough money to complete the work on getting our damaged infrastructure fixed, what would you do? What I would do is say to the government that the priorities of Christchurch are these, and we want to renegotiate the agreements which, have, which were reached previously. That's, I mean, it's as simple as that. No, no, but... but for example, the, in the horizontal infrastructure, it's a predetermined rate of contribution from central government for well, predetermined <laughs> assets. Renegotiate. I no, mean, no, the no. government was yeah. the, the government. What, what, what I'm saying is, is that it's, I, I think that there is an assumption that's being made that there is somehow more that is due. And what if mm -hmm. there isn't more due under the cost-sharing agreement that we have now? Right from the outset, the government uh, rejected the idea of having a, um, what do they call it, um, uh, that everyone in New Zealand pays a, pays a, flat, yeah. a flat fee. Right? How or dumb flat, was that? Flat, the government rejected that. How dumb was that? Well, OK, that's dumb. They made that decision. Yeah. Well, they should wear that decision. And, and, and the council needs to tell the government this is completely unacceptable. We didn't know the situation was as bad as it was. Um, we've, we've now got this crisis where, where we have to come and we have to renegotiate. And instead of the government pressuring the council to sell assets, the council's pressuring the government to say, look, we're not selling assets. That's completely off board. We didn't, no council here campaigned to sell assets. And we simply say to the government, you know, this is what the people need. And they rejected other options in the past. Well, um, that's their problem. It shouldn't be the problem well, of the it's people. It's our problem now. Ellie. Just very quickly. So you go to the government, you say, right, either renegotiate or actually give us some more money. And they go, I don't think so. What do you do? Well, you say to them, you, you get the people of Christchurch on side, is what I said before. You get the people of Christchurch on side. People of Christchurch do not want their assets sold. And if the council comes up with a clear plan, and I'm really pleased that the... Um, People's Choice people have come up with, with an, an alternative. But the, the council comes up with an alternative and says to the people, this is what we've got. You'll find 75% of the city will say, no, we don't want. We want to keep our assets yeah, and we, we want this. No, Absolutely. But, but if we can't get an audited account across the line, an audited budget across the line by the 30th of June, well, then you will have your wish. I think that um, we're... Well, it's true. Well... The, the point is that um, 
I, I can't, I just don't understand why the council is so reluctant to challenge the government publicly. Mm -hmm. The you're way, making, the way you're, making, the, you're making assumptions. The way Scott, well, I've never we seen are it. I haven't seen it. I we are, seen. we are. Well, but we've been awaiting the independent review of the horizontal infrastructure, and we're all, all is soon to be revealed. Vicky, can I just ask John, just in terms of the assets that the current the city council owns, that the people of Christchurch own, do you have a? Um, some are more valuable than others. For no. example. Uh, let me just give you an example. At the moment, we are investing very heavily post earthquake in the Enable network. So we are committed to spending another 300 or so million dollars on a new asset purchased post earthquake. So does that have the same degree of um, uh, strategic value to you as the port, the airport in Orion? I think that's the, the problem I said before about looking at you know tree by tree. We're looking at the whole forest. I mean, the council should be investing in and in, in developing new you know new in, 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 in infrastructure itself for the benefit of the people of Christchurch. There's no problem with any of that, but we shouldn't be looking at selling the assets which we have. I mean, it's like. But if we hadn't invested that money, we could have loaded all of the debt onto those companies, the existing companies. Yeah, but I mean, I think that's. That's yeah. the problem. Is that, is that I don't know that people are are hearing what the problem is, and I'm you know I've been. The problem is we're missing the big picture. The yeah, problem but you're is representing that, the council... that that I'm saying that there's not to bother making a submission against selling assets unless it could be detailed how the projected budget for shortfall shortfall could be met. I said it would be better rather than just coming along and saying no to any asset sales. Come with the alternative, and it is and it has to be an auditable result. Well, we've come the with the alternative. No, yes. ask the government for more money. Renegotiate the agreements. No, but I mean, that means what, ask what, the government for more does, money. What, that does, and Rio Tinto do it. Sky City does it. The well, big I'm, corporates I'm do it all the time. I'm afraid we don't have quite the, um, the, the, the bargaining they position. And, and they, yeah, anyway, but, but we, we may get to the point that you were looking for anyway. Sorry. But thank you very much. Much appreciated. And last for the evening.